Come on, let's start.
wave at me out your window if everybody can hear okay. I'm scanning. Good. We're so we're so appreciate you being here, and we're here to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Several things we need to do today, other than sing, our governor has declared today as a day of prayer for the state of Arkansas. And so I think it would be well fitting that we join together right now. We know why we're meeting like this, and it's because of the virus that's going around, and we're doing this uh, as a, well, in honor of our authorities, not only over the assemblies of God, but our state authorities have recommended and instructed us to meet like this for your protection. And, uh, but we can still, even though we're separated by a few feet, we're in our vehicles, we can still join together. That's what we're doing in the name of Jesus. And he said he'd be in our midst. Amen. To worship and praise the Lord. So, amen. So let's pray. Everybody just pray in your own way. Let's pray for our, for our uh, Arkansas, for our world, our state, uh, and our nation as as I said, today is a day of prayer. So let's pray. Father, we lift up right now our nation, our world, our state of Arkansas. We lift it up before you in Jesus' name. Lord, there's a lot of hurting people today. There's a lot of families that have lost loved ones recently. And we know that they are still grieving. And we feel for them, Lord. We... we uh, join with them right now and we lift them up before you we pray that your holy spirit would comfort that you would encourage and that you would touch them as only you can holy spirit and father we pray for our president our vice president the task force we we pray for every governor of every state during this time of extreme extreme situations but Lord we know that you are an extreme God and you can give the grace that is needed for our leaders the wisdom that is needed for our leaders and I pray Lord for the citizens of our country for patience and for you to touch them during this time and Lord we love you and we thank you that Lord we're believing that you're going to Put a stop to this virus, in it, Lord, in an expedient manner that uh, you're going to uh, help those that are in the medical field, give them the wisdom and the knowledge to come up with a cure and with a vaccine to prevent further infection. God, we know that all knowledge and wisdom comes from you. We thank you for our doctors and our nurses that are on the front lines. Lord, our hospital personnel that, Lord, literally they are putting themselves at risk to help others. But, Lord, you put that in them. That's not just a profession for them. I know that is a calling. So we lift up our nation, our governor, and, and all of those in authority today. We lift up every pastor in the country and the world, missionaries, Lord, that are having to come up with creative ideals, just like this one, to be able to minister to their flock. We pray you would touch them today in a special way in Jesus' name. Uh, if, uh, would you like to come? And we're going to pray for Mims today. For uh, He's going to come. We, we have the, uh, the blessing to have them located so close to us. And I've asked him if he would come down to represent all of the first responders and all of those that uh, are having to answer the call whenever the phone rings. And we appreciate you, my friend. We really let's give him a good hand. Off your horn. All right, let's pray for him. Can you stretch your hand out, Father? Thank you for this young man. That and Lord, as he stands in today, he represents all of the first responders. Everybody from the people on the ambulances to the fire trucks to Lord, even I pray even for the nurses and the doctors and the doctors again, the emergency room people. Lord, I pray that you would strengthen them, that you would protect them. I know that many have contracted the virus in helping others, but I pray that, Lord, that you would supernaturally protect our first responders, our healthcare workers, protect them so that they can help and minister to others. And I'm thankful, Lord, for their service. 
I'm asking you to strengthen them and minister to them in a special way. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Thank you, my friend. Appreciate you so much. And Lord, we pray for all of those that are out of work. Many have lost their jobs right now and they're hurting. Their hearts are full of fear because they're afraid of what, Lord, how they're going to pay their bills and how they're going to, uh, uh, to buy food for their family. God, I don't have all the answers, but I know that you do. And I just pray that during this time, everybody everywhere would not just look to man for the answer, but that they would turn their hearts and their eyes up towards heaven. And they would look to you, Lord, that there would be a great spiritual awakening, a revival, that, Lord, that would begin to take place around the world, Lord, like we have never, ever seen before. And we believe that and confess that and declare that today, a mighty spiritual awakening in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Again, we appreciate you being here. Those of you that will be viewing this on our Facebook and also on our YouTube channel, we welcome you. Thank you for, for joining with us. If our ushers would come, we're going to receive our tithes and offerings. And they're going to be coming around to your vehicle at a safe arm's distance. And they're wearing protective gloves, so they can handle your money. And uh, they will uh, join Sister Lori in the Fellowship Hall six feet apart. And they'll be counting our funds. Thank you for helping support our church during these times. Because the church's expenses goes on. Uh, the bill's still coming in, and you know how that is. So thank you very much for your participation. So, Father, bless the offering and multiply it, that it be more than enough to meet the need. And thank you for these faithful people that continue to give in times like these. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll be sending out another text to remind everybody that you can give online. Just go to our church website, follow the instructions, and also I will be sending you out a reminder that you can give by text now. You can text your gift, and we have a reserve number that's just our church. Nobody else got that particular number. You can text, and it'll go right into our bank account at our <coughs> church, and we appreciate that. Or you mail in your tithe if this, if this thing drags on very much longer, or if it's pretty next week, let me tell you, if it's not raining... We're going to do this again next week. But if it's raining, we're not going to do it just like we are now. We'll, we'll post something online and you can get online to watch. All right, let's sing a little bit more while you give your offering. Amen. Leaning on the everlasting arms. That's what we're doing today.
because that's going to go with my message today. Let me just read it to you. What have I to dread? What have I to fear leaning on the everlasting arms? I have blessed peace with my Lord so near leaning on the everlasting arms. I'm glad we have the Lord to lean on even in times like these. Well, friends, we have a living hope. His name is Jesus. Without Him, there would be no hope. But He's alive. The tomb is empty. I'm so glad He came, gave His life on an old rugged cross, shed His blood that we might have forgiveness of sins. But He rose again on the third day, and He ever liveth to make an intercession for us, seated at the right hand of the Father. He is our living hope. Let's worship Him in this chorus together. Thank you, Lord.
hope. Before I bring you the message today, let me say that our restrooms are open in, you, in case of an emergency. You need to go and take care of stuff. Uh, but we'd ask you to go one at a time. Uh, there should be a greeter or somebody there. And uh, just follow the proper protocol. Be sure to wash your hands. And we've got, uh, uh, we've got uh, Purell and other stuff in there you can use also. But just remember that. But we did open them up in case someone needed to, needed to take care of, of business today in that manner. Well, through it all, the Lord is faithful. I'm sure that all of us that are here today, we've been through one thing or another in life. If we live long enough, we know what valley's are all about. We know what climbing a mountain a time or two is all about. We know what defeat sometimes feels like. Many of us have been through major sicknesses. We've, we've been through difficult times. The one thing that's been certain through it all, and that is the Lord has never left us. He's never forsook us. He's faithful, and He's brought us through these things. So surely we can sing this song. It's an older song, but what a powerful message. It just says, through it all, Mary's going to sing the verses. Here we go. Through it all. Sing it if you know it. I've learned to trust in Jesus.
thank you all singers and musicians. We, we appreciate you coming and helping today. I've been praying about what I needed to share today, and there's so much on my mind and in my heart that, that uh, because of time, really, I don't have time to, to share it all. Um, I want to encourage you to, if you haven't already, to tune in to our Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel, and you can review and re-listen to any other messages we preached over the last several months. And also recent messages as well that we have um, brought little devotionals, if you want to call them that. And I believe and I hope and I pray at least that's, that's our intention, that they are uh, encouraging to you. And uh, I just want to encourage you as your pastor to stay faithful to the Lord on your knees. My, if you've ever prayed, you need to pray right now because we have so much to pray about. And... Uh, Meditate on the goodness of the Lord. I know that you, like me, you're inquisitive and you want to know what's going on in our country and our nation. So it's easy for us to turn the news on, the convenience of it. But I want you to be careful not to get so bombarded and so beat down of, of all the negative stuff that you hear through the news that it gets in your spirit and, and it really can be depressing, and it can push you down. So I want to encourage you, spend at least as much time in the Word and, and in prayer as you do listening to the news. If you'll do that, you'll keep yourself built up in your most holy faith. You will encourage yourself in the Lord, and that's what we need to do. Uh, remember what First Peter says. It says, humble yourselves before and under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time, casting all of your care upon Him because He cares for you. So remember that uh, you can go to the Lord in prayer and cast your cares upon Him. Don't, don't carry these heavy burdens around, fears of tomorrow and worry and fret about this and about the unexpected or the unknown. Get on your knees before the Lord. Un unburden your heart before Him. He will fill your heart and your mind with peace and He'll take away that fear and that worry. So today, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about two words that goes like this. These are the words of Jesus. These are the words of God the Father all through the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. In many, many occasions, here was the word of the Lord and I believe it's the word of the Lord for us today. Fear not. Can I get an amen? amen? I want everybody, I want everybody to say it with me right where you are. Are you ready? Fear, Fear not. not. Say it again. Fear, Fear not. not. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 1, for God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. How many of you know that fear is a liar? The reason fear is a liar, it's because it comes from the devil. And the devil never tells you anything that's true. In scripture, we've been instructed not to fear. You can trace this particular command from Abraham in the book of Genesis. Think about it. All the way through the Bible to the last book in the New Testament, the book of Revelation. You hear this same command, and I believe it is a command, not a suggestion. Because anytime it comes from the Lord, it's a command. You hear those two words, fear not. This was God's special word to Abraham in Genesis 15. It was God's word to Jacob in Genesis 46. It was God's word to Moses and the children of Israel in Exodus chapter 20. It was God's word to Joshua in chapter 10 of the book that bears his name. And on and on through scripture, you hear him tell us, fear not. Fear not what is going on in our world today. Say with me one more time. Fear not. Come on, let me hear you say it one more time. Fear not. In the book of Luke chapter 21, the Bible tells us of something that's going to happen in the last days. We know that we're in the last days. We don't know exactly how far in we are, but I believe we're in the last of the last days. 
But here's what the Lord said to His disciples then and to us today in Luke 21 and verse 26. Men's hearts shall fail them for fear. Fear of what? He tells us. Fear of what is going to come on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. But God's word to us today is to do not fear and do not be afraid. Over nearly 80 times in Scripture, through the Old Testament and the New Testament, we're told to fear not. But also nearly 40 times in those books, in the Old and New Testament, we're told not to be afraid. So you really can't separate the two. In, from Matthew chapter 14, verse 27, when Jesus told His disciples, He said, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. To Jesus comforting them on the Sea of Galilee, when they saw Him walking on the water and they thought it was a spirit, and they became afraid, Jesus said these words in John 6, verse 20. But He said unto them, It is I, be not afraid. Jesus is also telling you and telling me today. Folks, hear me because I believe the Holy Spirit wants you to hear these words. Be not afraid. I know that there's a lot we can be afraid of. And, we, and if we're not careful, our hearts can be overwhelmed and our minds can be overwhelmed with the spirit of fear. But God has not given us that spirit of fear. That comes from the enemy. Remember, God gives us the spirit of power and the spirit of love and the spirit of a sound mind. Remember Psalm 91 and verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress and my God. In Him will I trust. Surely He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings you shall trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Listen to these words. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Why? Because He hasn't given you, God hasn't given you the spirit of fear. If you're afraid today, if you are fearful today, it is because the enemy has put that in your heart and in your spirit and in your mind. Well, what, do, what am I supposed to do? Well, you're supposed to get in the Word. You're supposed to pray about it and rebuke that spirit of fear and declare unto the enemy that you're not going to take that anymore, that God's going to, that His abiding peace and joy and love is going to be uh, abiding in your heart and in your life. Well, if the devil hasn't given us the spirit of fear, what has God given us again? Let's go over it. He's given us, first of all, the spirit of power. Power to encounter difficult times like we're in. Power to encounter dangers. Power to bear up under trials and troubles and tribulations. Power to not be the victim in these situations, but to be the victor. Folks, we have the power because we have the Holy Spirit. You remember what he said in Acts that he came that that uh, he would send back once Jesus went to heaven. He said, I'm going to not leave you comfortless nor powerless, but I'm going to send you back the Holy Spirit. He'll not just be with you, but he will be in you and he will be in you to give you power. We have power. That's why we can say as first John four and four, ye of God, little children, and you've overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is within the world. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember, the Lord has not given you the spirit of fear, but one of power. And the more power that you and I realize we have, the less fear can get a grip on us. Because we know that the power that's in us is greater than the power from the enemy. The more power we have that we realize we have, the more peace that will fill our hearts and our minds. I love that verse of Scripture in John 14, verse 27 that Jesus said. He said, listen to these words. Peace, I live with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. 
Let not your heart be troubled or let it be afraid. So let me encourage you this afternoon or this morning, be not afraid today. Be not afraid because God has not given you the spirit of fear. <coughs> Excuse me, but He's given you the spirit of power. Now understanding that, and understanding and having the realization of the power we've been given, what does that really mean? It means that we have the power, more power than the enemy has ever imagined. We have power over him. But this realization of power does not give us the authority to tempt God in unwise actions. I know that our government during this time is very faithfully, I believe, and very uh, sternly and cautiously has given the American people various instructions to follow. We hear over and over again about that, about that safe distance uh, uh, between us and other people when we get out and we mingle. <clears throat> and they put those guidelines uh, in force to, for the welfare of you and I. And I believe we should honor our authorities and we should abide by them. That's why we're meeting like this. We could have church inside, but it would be not honoring those in authority. Our district superintendent of the Arkansas Assemblies of God has instructed us to meet like this. They are following proper protocol. Spirit-filled people, we're not afraid. When I went to when I went to Walmart and I purchased groceries, I wasn't afraid. I didn't go in there shaking and all upset about things, but I followed that safe, those safe guidelines put into place. Why am I saying those things? Because even though we realize that we've got power over the enemy, it does not give us the free way to tempt God. And uh, for instance, when I ride a motorcycle, some people ride it without a helmet. I ride it with a helmet. Why? Because I love my head. If I happen, to, and, I, and I hope and pray that never happens, but I, I want to be as well protected. That is just what? Using wisdom. The devil knew that Jesus had power, that if he would throw himself off the cliff, that the Lord's angels would save him. Do you know that was one way that the devil tempted the Lord? Throw yourself off here and... The Lord's already healed. He's already given His angels charge concerning you, and they will come and they'll bear you up. But Jesus knew that it was not right to tempt God or to tempt fate, as some would say. So what was the Lord's response? Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So that's why we're meeting this way, not out of fear. Some people might say, well, because we're not having church inside, we're just a bunch of... Spirit-filled Christians that are afraid. No, we're not afraid. I'm not the least bit afraid today. I have the peace of God that passes all understanding that's dwelling in my heart. My mind is at rest. My mind is at peace. But we're meeting this way, not out of fear, but in faith. And we're meeting this way out of wisdom and out of honoring our leaders to protect our people, not to hinder our people, so it's not a show of doubt and unbelief, as some would shout, but it's a matter of honor. Don't get me started in that, because I could teach on that a while. We are still honoring God today just as much as if we were meeting inside. And uh, if, we, if this thing tarries on, we'll be doing various things like this in the future, keeping you, the people, safe. But we do have power. Can I hear an amen? amen. We have power. Fear is of the devil and has torment, and fear is a liar. But we've been given not the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power. Now what else have we been given? <coughs> we've not only been given the spirit of power, but we've been given the spirit of love. Now why is that so important? Because love is a mighty force of God. It was so mighty that John 3.16 declares, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in Him would not perish, but have everlasting life. It was the mighty force of the love of God that caused Jesus to leave His place in heaven 
to come down and put on the robe of flesh, robe of flesh, and live a life just like you and I without sin and die on the cross. It was love. That's a powerful thing. I don't know of anything that could inspire courage in anyone to face uh, danger fearlessly or to endure tribulation than having not only the spirit of power of God, but having the spirit of love of God dwelling in your heart. When our missionaries go to foreign countries, what sends them? Well, the Lord calls them and He sends them. And He equips them with the right stuff so that they can be effective on the mission field. He gives them the power of the Holy Spirit where they can have the boldness that they need to have to testify and, and to witness and to preach the gospel. But He also gives them such powerful love that they can leave the comforts of their homes in America and they can go to third world countries where there are shortages of so many things and the comforts of home. That what, what, give, what could give them the strength and the courage and the power to be content living without all the comforts that you and I enjoy? It's because the love of God propels them. The love of God uh, gives them the courage that they need. So it's not only the power of the Spirit, but it's the power of God's love. And I'll tell you, I'm so thankful for that today that I've not only been given the spirit of power of the Holy Spirit, but I've also been given the spirit of love. There's a third thing the Bible said that God's given us in place of fear. Remember, He said He hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power and the spirit of love and the spirit of a sound mind. Of a sound mind. The Greek word there denotes one of a sober mind or a man of prudence and discretion. Thank God for a sound mind. There's a lot of folks today that their minds are so twisted and tormented and, and uh, they are so um, flip-flopping from one thing to the other. They're just confused. They're, they're, they're full of confusion, which is not of God at all. But I'm so glad today that I've got a sound mind, that I'm, I'm thinking clearly that I'm not overwhelmed by the thoughts of the enemy because I put my mind upon the things of God and He's given me clear direction. He's given me peace. I'm not confused at all today. I may not understand everything. I may not be able to give you an answer for all the things you may be seeking an answer for, but I can direct you to Christ. I know in whom I have believed, and I know that He's able to take care of us in whatever situation that may come. Preacher, do you not fear what's going to happen tomorrow? No, sir, because I know that God holds tomorrow, and I know that He's holding my hand, and if He's brought me this far, He's going to be able to bring me through. Can I hear a praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Amen. I guess that's what all that honking means. <laughs> 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm going to wrap it up. That, that you not be soon shaken in mind, or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word. Listen to these words. He said, be careful for nothing, which simply means don't you worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatever things are pure and lovely and of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So get your Bible out. Listen to some good preaching at home. Stay, stay fed in your spirit. Don't just be watching movies all the time on Netflix. Amen. Listen to some good Holy Ghost filled preaching. Get the word out. Study it. When you do that, you're building yourself up and you're creating a mind that is of a sound mind that has no confusion, that is not troubled or worried about anything because your trust, just like my trust, is not in the arm of flesh. It is not in man, but our trust is in God. I want you to know that... that uh, Sister Mary and I are praying for each one of you every day. I hope I've not been bugging you too much with sending out those long tests every day. 
But I, I try to, to send you out a word from the Lord, scriptures, and I want you to know when I do that, that I'm actually praying for you. Maybe not a long extended prayer, but I am praying for you when I send that text out. And I want you to know that we're here for you. If we can do anything for you, if you don't want to get out and buy your groceries or whatever, uh, if you'll just send me a text, let me know what it is. Uh, I'll go get them for you. I'll deliver them to your house. I'll do whatever. We'll do whatever we need to do to take care of you because we want you to be took care of. We want you to be blessed. If you can't uh, do various things around your house because family can't come over or whatever, if you'll call, we'll be glad to sneak in there and do it for you. We're here for you, and thank you for being here for us. Um, I want to ask you right now, just bow your heads, though I can't see you. Just, just bow your heads wherever you are. And I want, to, I want to ask you right now, I know that many of you may have some uh, prayer requests, and you may not be able, of course you can't vocalize them, but if you will text me uh, your prayer request, we will pray for them every day. And uh, we will lift them up before the Lord. I know that uh, uh, somebody mentioned to me, I believe it was Doyle Brown, about his brother, I think. Wasn't it your brother that fell and, and broke his hip? Let's, let's be praying for him. And please pray for our president every single day. But let's pray right now. Lord, I don't know what's troubling your, your people today. I don't know what burdens that they're bearing. But I know that you're the burden bearer. You are the one that can make our burdens light. So we pray right now, Lord Jesus, that you would touch everyone, touch Dole's brother, bring comfort to him in his body, in his spirit, in his mind. Lord, I pray for anybody listening, maybe across the way, maybe in a house somewhere next door in our community, anyone that doesn't know the Lord as their Savior. I pray, Lord, that today somebody that may watch this video on our Facebook, on our church website, or on our YouTube channel. Lord, that doesn't know you. I pray, Lord, that they would just pray that prayer of confession. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry. I know I'm a sinner. And I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. Come into my life. Lord, I, I make that declaration today that I'm going to serve you. Be the Lord of my life. Father, if they'll pray that prayer and mean it wherever they are, Lord, they may be out in their yard right now close by listening to what we're preaching. Lord, they could say that prayer right there. And Lord, they would be born again and their name written in the Lamb's book of life. God, go beyond our ability today and reach hearts and lives. Lord, reach them for you. We lift them up before you today. We ask your Holy Spirit now to go. Go forth and minister to every need. Thank you today, Lord, for our time together. Thank you for pretty weather. Lord, thank you for the privilege in our country to be able to do something like this without fear, Lord, of being arrested or, or being reprimanded because of expressing our faith, our faith in you, oh God. We love you today. We thank you and we praise you. We give all the praise and all the honor to our King of Kings. And our Lord of Lords. Come on, somebody. Lift your hands right where you are. And let's give the Lord a good hallelujah praise. Come on, praise Him. Lord, you're worthy to be praised. You're worthy. You're worthy.